you'll never be able to fully analyze deals until you're in due diligence and have access to everything. Mm. Right. So until you have exclusivity and you're going to do a deep dive due diligence, you won't really be able to do 100% of your due diligence anyway. So have that in mind. And my mindset is like, I want to get to a point where as fast as possible, I want to know if I'm in the ballpark for a deal with the seller. Like obviously have some kind of a pre-diligence process, right? Look at the deal, see if that's the deal that you want. Look at whatever they're sending you, ask whatever questions you can ask, but don't think that you need to know every little thing about the business before you're making an offer. By definition, the seller knows more about the business than you. And by definition, you will only really know about the business after you own it, right? You will still need to ask a lot of questions. So my mindset is like filter deals fast so you could find someone who's motivated to sell so you could get an offer accepted so you could dive and go into 30, 60, 90 days due diligence where you can really do a deep dive and see if you want that business. And worst, worst case, if you find something that you don't like, you back out. I will look at whatever I can, enough to be able to make an offer, enough to also be able to see if I can finance that deal, ideally. Mm -hmm. Every structure where you let the seller retain equity in the business, it's all about selling the vision. Right. So it's all about look like I'm looking to build something massive here and I'm looking for people who will be my partners. I'm not looking to buy companies outright or owners outright because I believe that sellers who want to sell their business right away and run away. They don't believe in the business as much. And I'm not looking to run all those businesses to myself. I'm looking for partners or people who believe in the business long term that will be my partner long term and will have not just an initial exit but we'll also have a second bite of the apple. So you need to sell it to them and tell them, look, whatever I'm paying you right now, two, three times in the future, because we're going to build a larger company can be worth five, six times or 10 or whatever company you can build. So it's literally about selling your vision and showing them, look, whatever equity you're retaining right now will be worth 10, 100x potential in the future. If you're too specific, you might give up on opportunities that might be good opportunities, but you'll be like, ah, oh, it's not specifically what I want. So unless you have certainty that you have a very specific outcome, just allow yourself to be more broad. It's kind of like what I say in the program. I say, look, if you have a sector that you 100% sold on, focus on that sector. If you don't have a sector, be sector agnostic, right? And allow yourself to look at everything. So I, I feel the same with kind of like the vision and outcome. It's kind of like just have a, at least a compass of where you're trying to go, but then also allow yourself to be flexible. Now, there's no rule of thumb. It really depends on the sector really depends on the size of the company, how fast the company's growth, what's the um, quality of the product, service, customers, or is there recurring revenue, the business, how dependent the business is on one channel. Like there's a lot of nuances, right? Look at probably companies out there, why Tesla is being valued so much compared to, I don't know, Ford, you know, they have Elon Musk. I mean, I'm talking like multiples, right? So. You can predict Elon Musk, you know, you can predict the fact that, okay, Tesla got like an amazing product and an amazing future that they predict and forecast, right? So it's a lot of things that are kind of like behind just financial results. A lot of it just comes down to the story. Same with the idea of going out there to investors and raising capital, especially if you look at the venture capital space, like a lot of the capital raise rounds happen there literally just by creating great stories. When we're saying no money down deals, the way to look at it is it doesn't necessarily mean that we're not paying money for the business, right? We can pay a lot of money for the business, but the money doesn't necessarily need to be yours. So that's the first thing. But then the question is, okay, where the money is coming from? The money needs to come from either debt financing, equity financing, or the seller. Those are pretty much the only three options. And then we have a lot of ways to get those three options. Right. So even when you're thinking about just the seller, the seller, you can do seller finance and you can do earn out. You can do what I explained to Dennis, which is like creating an upside deal where you're growing with the business. Right. That's basically using the seller to finance the deal. When it comes to using debt or cash flow finance or whatever, those type of financing, that's what we're talking about institutions like SBA that you mentioned or asset lenders or cash flow lenders or different receivable financing or whatnot. Right. That's those are some of uh, examples for debt. Then equity, you can use a lot of different sources. It can be pretty much your money, an investor, it can be you going to suppliers, customers, hiring a CEO to invest alongside you, creating a campaign with the seller is another seller one, right? So I just gave you literally like probably 10 different deal structures 
to go and find yourself equity debt or use the seller to help you close the deal. If you go to a bank and you tell them, hey, I'm, I'd like to raise capital and then you think, okay, that's not enough. I want more. Then the way to actually raise that, which happens a lot, is to go back to the bank or the same bank or a different one and tell them, look, hey, I want to raise more capital for working capital so I can basically operate the business and grow it and have, you know, some kind of a margin between what I need to pay back for the bank and the profits of the business. That's actually very common to do almost like a two loan thing, one to close the deal and one for operating capital. And then if you're only using the bank, just to keep everything simple, if you are 100% owner of the business, you can do whatever the fuck you want with the money. Does someone going to look at it and see it as your skin in the game? No, not necessarily, right? So it's not like you can say, I'm going to raise extra capital and consider that as my skin in the game as the deal maker. What sometimes might happen is if there's seller financing as part of the deal, that might be considered as skin in the game or the equity part. And then it really depends on the financial institution that you're working with. Have a good one. Bye-bye.